Importing parts list from Excel. This will be the first example. I'm going to now bring up the publisher application. And from publisher, we will import a model. In this case, it's going to be a SolidWorks model. And we will bring in just a solid assembly. It's a real simple model for this tutorial because I want it to be very clear what the bill of materials, what's working on the bill of materials. And we're going to look at some spreadsheets as well to see how uh, the bill of materials works. Let me bring up a spreadsheet too. Okay, so here's our model. Um, what our intention is is to import a 3D uh, or a spreadsheet. Uh, this spreadsheet may have been may come from a PDM or from your SolidWorks information. To do that, let's look at the step one would be to set up the spreadsheet properly. So let me move over to uh, Excel here, and you'll notice it just has a material, an item number, a part number, quantity, and a description. Now, how we're going to do this is that the part number is going to map to a metadata field within our 3D model. And this works out because this part number coming from the PDM is a part number that actually is metadata in this model. So as you look through that one, keep in mind this bill of materials, I'm now going to go back to Publisher. And I want to uh, I'm going to do a mouse over here just to show you the metadata. So if you see here, the document name in this case matches the field in that bill of materials column. So those are how the two uh, data sets are going to map together. So to do the mapping now, we will go to our import up here, and we'll press import. And the file we just looked at was this bill of materials part number .xls, and we select open, and we select the sheet. It was the first sheet in the Excel spreadsheet, which was BOM for SolidWorks. And we'll press OK. And what it automatically did is it chose the mapping for us. It mapped document name from inside Quadraspace to the Excel column of part number. Uh, there's some other mappings um, as far as data goes. These are special fields for Quadraspace, the call number, quantity, or row name. Um, but they're not as important as the mapping. There's got to be a mapping here, or when the bill of materials comes in, the parts will not be tied together. Uh, so this is one method. We press OK in this case. And we now have a bill of materials that has all these parts built into it that are mapped. So let's go back. And if you notice, we have the same as the spreadsheet. We have a material, an item number, part number, quantity, and our description. And what we want to do now is let's close this out. And I just want to show you that these are mapped properly. So we can bring up our model panel. And from here, we can select Bill of Materials for SolidWorks. That's the name of the one that we just brought in. Now, we could have changed that name. I just took the default name. So let's look at this. If we click this part, we now see that our Bill of Materials is mapped to that. And if this is important to get these mapped, because not only is it important for selection, but when you go and do call numbers or mouse overs, if you want that Bill of Materials information to show up, they have to be mapped properly to the part. So that verifies that those are mapped for us. Now let's go and do something else to our spreadsheet. I'm going to bring back up the spreadsheet. And we're going to do a couple manual edits to this. I'm going to uh, add a column. Let's just add a column color or something here. Just some standard random column. We'll just say red, blue, green. And I also want to add a row. And we're just going to have a row of uh, a part number quantity, description. This is just going to be a glue. So this is uh, something that's not in the actual uh, bill of materials, or actually this is not going to map, and I just want to show you how that works out, because the non-mapped parts are also useful, but there's a, a ability to detect which ones didn't map for you. And we'll just say black for this one, and give it a material. I don't know what these mean, something like that. Okay, so let's save this. And we'll say uh, BOM part number modified. And now let's go back to publisher. And we're going to bring in that version of it. So let's go import part number modified. 
pick the uh, sheet again. And let's change the name here. This is, we'll just call it modified. And you'll notice it automatically found the mapping for us again. And when we press OK, it imports that. And now you'll notice that it has our new column built in, which was color. We have a gray block now. This gray is important because it indicates that there is no parts assigned to that row. So it's a non-part row. Um, and that's a real good way to make sure if everything comes in white, then when you've imported the bill of materials, then it is matching parts and it's finding parts to map to. Um, and if it all comes in gray, some, for some reason your keys aren't tied together properly. So in this case, we wanted this to come into gray because it's just a glue that's not part of our model. And now if we go back, we can select, it's already selected for us. And again, we can verify that we have those mapped properly. And I think if we do a mouse over here, we now have color and everything from our mouse overs because it's looking at that bill of materials that we have imported. Now, some of the things that you want to make sure of is that there's, when you're importing your bill of materials or when you're setting it up in Excel, it needs to have the header in the top row. Uh, some CAD tools, when you export a bill of materials, they put the header in the bottom row, but in this case, it needs to be in the top row. And the, this is the, what we just showed here is the preferred way of doing an import. Now there is another way specifically for SOLIDWORKS that I'm going to demonstrate. And this one, in some cases, may allow you to get more information. So I just wanted to go over it real quick. Um, let me bring up a, the spreadsheet of this, this one. So you'll notice on this spreadsheet is similar, but we have a little more information. We have a SOLIDWORKS name and a SOLIDWORKS configuration. And this allows some more advanced mapping. It doesn't really matter for this because it's such a simple uh, set of components. But in some cases, you can export a bill of materials from SOLIDWORKS that has both the name and the configuration and use that for mapping and get uh, a more precise, precise results. So let's just go in and I will show the import process for this one and that will close out this part of the tutorials. So let's go back to Publisher. And we now want to do import again. And we're going to import this one called part config name SOLIDWORKS only. This is only relevant for SOLIDWORKS. And you'll notice we have a little bit different mapping settings here. It says map parts by SOLIDWORKS file configuration name and it just sets up the SOLIDWORKS file name and the SOLIDWORKS configuration to map those together. Same parts down here and we say OK and again we get a bill of materials um, and if we click done here I guess since we kept this default name we just have a name of sheet one and there you can see that the components are mapped properly.